Good morning, and welcome to Church of the Resurrection. My name is Liz Titchener, and I'm so glad to be worshiping with all of you on this, the second Sunday of Advent. Everything you need to join in our worship is in the PDF of a bulletin. You can find it in the comments. And as we can no longer sing uh, here in the sanctuary with our, our little live stream team, I encourage you to sing out with all your hearts on our behalf there at home. We'll begin uh, centering ourselves to enter into worship with the bell. the time. Blessed are you, holy and living one. You come to your people and set them free.
May God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See The Lord comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Join me in reading from Psalm 85, responsively by whole verse. I will read the odd verses. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have have forgiven forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, Truly his his salvation salvation is very near to those those who fear fear him, that that his his glory glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his peace. A reading from the second letter of Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, 
that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Pulled 
pork sandwiches had never been a comfort food of mine um, before I was pregnant. In fact, I can't remember having eaten it more than maybe once or twice beforehand and only very seldom since. But while I was pregnant with our first son, Fritz, for whatever mysterious reason, pulled pork sounded like just about the most delicious food possible. As I think um, most of you know, Fritz died suddenly and unexpectedly as an infant. And by the time we had made it around the year to what would have been his first birthday, a friend offered to bring us dinner. When she dropped it off, I saw that it was pulled pork. And I couldn't believe the coincidence. I exclaimed, surprised, that that had been the food that I had gone to such great lengths to track down when I had been pregnant. I know, she said gently, that was why she had made it for me. I was taken aback that she had paid such attention, that she had remembered some offhand comment I'd made many months before. The food was a comfort, but her care, it was her care that was a balm for me. My friend did this again the next year and the next. Even after she retired, she would drive from her home in Marin across the bridge to bring me her home-cooked pulled pork on my son's birthday. She knew it wouldn't change anything. And I think she also understood that it was a form of solace, and I needed it. How do we speak comfort into a time of fear and loneliness and heartbreak? How do we make that comfort real? Friends, this question weighs on me. I see the need. The stakes are high right now. What are we to do? Well, to begin with, I think we are to remember that we are not the first to come to this place of hardship. I hear the words from the prophet Isaiah, and I am transported, imagining the people who stand before him. They are weary, broken down. They have been for generations now. Jerusalem was sacked, destroyed their homes, their temple, everything. They have been living in exile, far from the land of their hearts, their culture, their faith. The loss in this exile is it's cumulative, I think, growing as it is passed down over time. It is into this exile that Isaiah speaks. This is where he brings God's word. And it is precisely into this pain that God calls for the gift of comfort. As Isaiah recounts it, God seems to be calling out for the whole heavenly host, for anyone, known or unknown, who will listen, prophets and divine messengers and anyone else, to deliver comfort to this stricken people. Enough is enough, the people hear God say. Yes, they have made some mistakes, some of them grave but what has happened to them in exile? This has been far beyond anything they, they could have warranted or brought upon themselves. And the comfort comes 
not just in the consolation that God does not desire the suffering for them. God's comfort flows through the prophet's words as the, the promise of a hope that is embodied, one that is carried into their flesh. This makes a difference in hard times for that hope to be made so concrete. God does not come with platitudes or empty promises of cheap grace, but instead offers a deep and real response to the suffering of these people. Isaiah, Isaiah speaks of the path, the very ground under their feet that is being made level. He tells of how God is remaking it so that we can walk this way without the grind of climbing straight up a steep path, nor with such risk as skidding down on the other side. God is calling instead for this way to be smoothed out, to let us walk calm and steady. The prophet tells of God feeding God's people as a shepherd feeds the flock, providing, making sure there is plenty, that it is good. And Isaiah describes the embrace that comes as God gathers us in close, gently held as a lamb in God's arms. This holy comfort is not theoretical, not simply an idea for us to consider, but tangible grace brought forth for our bodies. I am grateful that I am not living under the strife and hardship of exile. And even so, I am weary I think we all are. I felt it more acutely this past week as we marked our son's birthday once again. He would have been seven. And it was strange not being able to gather with friends in the shape that has been so helpful in the past. But we found ways to remember and to give thanks and to breathe. It was Tuesday evening, the, the day after my son's birthday, that I heard the doorbell ring and the kids bring in a package. I didn't give it much thought as I finished up my work. And a good while later, I went over to see what it was. I was met with a giant pink cartoon pig emblazoned across the side of this box with the words Oink Express across it. My jaw dropped and my eyes filled with tears. I had not talked to this friend in quite some time. And yet, even before opening the box, I knew exactly what it contained. Pandemic be damned, my friend had found a way to ship me pulled pork, to, to wing comfort my way for this day that she knows will always pull my heart open. Shipping was a little unpredictable, she later explained, uh, apologizing that it was a day late. It didn't matter. It was the promise of comfort made real there in my hands. And I knew once again that the prophet's words are true. This is the call, friends that we respond to our God who insists that now is the time to offer comfort, that now is the time to speak words of consolation, even in the wilderness, even if we have to get really creative to offer it. 
these words and acts of comfort, they belong in our times. I believe that this generosity of spirit is always good, always invited. But it is all the more so now when we are called up short and strung out and and maybe getting to the point where we are having a hard time fully believing this grace or trusting in this hope. This is precisely when we must enact this comfort, when we trust enough to make it real together. To be honest, I'm not sure how we're going to keep doing this in the days ahead. It sure feels like we have had our hands tied behind our backs several times over now. But we will. We will reach to offer this love and speak the hope of this comfort into being because it is who we are called to be. We will FedEx this love to each other if we have to. We will chalk it on the streets. We will scotch tape it to the windows. We will spell it out in Christmas lights. We will whisper it over the phone and sing it out of sync on Zoom. We will find a way. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says our God. God asks this of the whole heavenly host And she asks it of us as well. And together, we will keep finding a way. What shall I cry, O God, unto your people? What word of truth, what blessing shall I speak? Shall I shout harshly, calling out injustice, or gently sing of comfort to Trumpet blasts with 
with soft and soothing whispers, with thy set firmly on your promised land. Through all our lives, in sorrow and rejoicing, your reign of peace, the realm of Together, let us affirm our faith in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our, our sake, sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He, he suffered, suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As the birth of Jesus came once to overcome the brokenness of the world, let us pray for Christ to come again into our world. Come, Lord Jesus, come to the church, that as your body we may find you anew and reveal your transforming presence as we strive to live as you would have us love. Come, Lord Jesus, come to those who bear the authority of government, who hold the means of finance, and who wield all forms of power over others that they may, be, they may transcend divisions and seek the greater good for those whose lives they influence by their words and deeds. We pray especially for those living in immigration detention centers, prisons, and mental health facilities. Come, Lord Jesus, come to all those in need of your peace those whose lives have been shattered by war, natural disasters, gun violence, poverty, addiction, and other causes where hope seems futile, that your abundant grace may lead to new communities of love and care. We pray for all those uprooted from their lives and seeking refuge. Come, Lord Jesus, be present in our community and knit us together in the building up of your realm. This day, we pray especially for Pat, Colleen, Diana, Mary, Carly, and Kaylin, Randy, Sheila, and Sophie, members of our parish family.
Come, Lord Jesus, come with your healing grace to all those who suffer, especially from COVID-19. We pray for all who are on our parish prayer list, that your wholeness may come upon them and all those who surround them. Come, Lord Jesus, come to carry into your everlasting arms those who have died, especially Steve Green, the Reverend Dr. Richard Oral Henshaw, Kyle Strongman, Norman Wheeler, that all who mourn may know comfort through the hope of new and unending life in you. Jennifer Baylor. In praying together, God of, God of hope, hope, hear our humble, humble prayer that we may serve you in holiness and faith and give voice to your presence among us until the day of your coming of your Son, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned, sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. lives. We have, we have denied, denied your goodness, goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We, we repent, repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, source of all being, has in great mercy promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with heartfelt repentance and true faith turn away from sin. Have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. Will you use the faith you 
found to reshape the world around through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me Lord your summons echoes true when you would call my name let me turn and follow you your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me all things come of you O oh God May God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us and all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your Spirit, you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and God of might, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. O Sado in the highest, O Sado in the Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. 
Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with Mary, the God-bearer, and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin again. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. And let us pray together. In union, O Lord, Lord, with with your your faithful faithful people people who long to gather at every every altar of your church church, where the Holy Holy Eucharist has has been been celebrated, and we pray will be celebrated again soon. We desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. Since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Come on now. Well, that's special. I'm trying to pull up the live stream so I can see your Thanksgivings. And it does not super want to cooperate. Let me grab this. All right. 
Hopefully this will work. If you are celebrating a birthday or an anniversary or some other moment of grace, I invite you to type that into the comments and we will pray with those in just a minute. Uh, first, a number of uh, notes, things about our common life together as we get closer and closer to Christmas. Um, first of all, today, this afternoon, is uh, the Christmas pageant <laughs> because uh, that is the year we are having. We're going to uh, gather on Zoom this afternoon, 3.30 for the youth who have speaking roles, and they already know that, and 4 o'clock for, uh, for kids, for any kids, your grandkids, your neighbors, if they want to take part, uh, anyone at all who wants to jump into this Zoom Christmas pageant. So for the kids, um, you can either f make uh, costumes from whatever you can find at home, uh, you know, towels over your head or sweatshirts inside out or whatever you like, and the kids will be encouraged to dress up for as many of the different roles in the pageant, scene by scene, as they would like, and act those out. Uh, you can also swing by the parking lot here at church between 12 and 1 if you'd like to pick up uh, some of the costumes that we already have. Whitney will be here and can drop those in your trunk without any contact any contact that way. Uh, so that's this afternoon. The, the link for the Zoom is in the ministry news that went out this morning. If you have any questions or any issues with that, uh, please be in touch with Whitney or Shannon. And we look forward to coming together to make this pageant happen in a new way this afternoon. We'll record it and share it out um, as we get closer to Christmas. Um, a few other notes. Uh, today is the second uh, class that Carol Held is leading uh, in helping us to enter in more creatively to Advent. It uh, happens at 1, also on Zoom. It's okay if you weren't there last week. Uh, it, um, each, each week builds on what has happened, but it also stands alone. So you can come to learn a new practice that way. And then finally, we have Vestry this coming Wednesday night. It's our uh, governing, our leadership body of the church. And those meetings are always open to anyone. Uh, and so if you'd like to join in uh, listening to that, you can reach out and I will send you the Zoom link. I think that will do it for now. Um, let's see. This is tiny today. Um, Gratitude for Anna's safe and COVID-free return from college. This is really a good thing. Uh, Riley turns 26 tomorrow. Uh, Davida's friend Jen has successfully recovered from COVID. Uh, gratitude to Shannon and Ben and Whitney for helping with the Zoom pageant. And uh, Kath's firstborn Jeremy celebrated his, fir his 41st birthday on Tuesday. Uh, I will add uh, two of my own thanksgivings. First, uh, giving thanks to God for our son Fritz and for the, uh, the life we got to share with him. Uh, and then also on Friday, I celebrated uh, eight years as a priest. And I am grateful indeed. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for safe returns home, for being gathered back together again. We give you thanks for health, for those who are recovering, and for the many, many nurses and doctors and all who work in health care who are working so hard right now to keep us well. We give you thanks for the gift of life, for birthdays in our midst, and for the leadership that helps us to tell this story of the birth once again, even and especially now. For all your many blessings, we give you thanks. Amen. Today, tomorrow, and always, we rejoice in the hands of God. May God.
God's powerful hands support you. May God's guiding hands lead you. May God's loving hands enfold you. We rejoice in the hands of God. Life is short. And we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God who made us, who loves us, and who travels with us be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.